Isn't it crazy how we sometimes make integrals harder than they need to be? I remember overcomplicating this one on my exam, and I'm here to help you out, so watch until the end because it's a lot simpler than you think. For this problem here, notice that for radicals, it helps sometimes to rewrite the expression where you have fractional powers instead. Imagine this problem being given to you where you actually had powers that were whole numbers. The way we could transform this problem to look like that is realizing that one half and one third have a least common multiple of six. Now, many of you may have tried a u substitution where you let u equal x to the sixth and you got stuck because for that, you require that you have a x term in front of dx on top here, which we don't have. But that's a, a case of making the problem harder than it needs to be because you might then try a whole other method that's really complicated when really all you needed to do was to do the reverse u substitution. So we let x equal u to the sixth versus u equals x to the sixth. That way, when you take the derivative here of both sides, you will get dx isolated on the left here, which is what we see in this integral, and that means you can safely make the substitution. Now, it might seem like we're overcomplicating things by introducing this 6u to the fifth on the right, but stick around because you're going to see why that's not the case. When I see x everywhere now, I'm going to plug in u to the sixth, and now we have this new integral. And notice for the bottom, 6 raised to the 1 half will be 3, and 6 raised to the 1 third will be 2, giving us this simplified expression. And now every term has a u squared factor. So what I'm going to do next is take that factor out on the top and bottom. And when you cancel out the u squared terms, you're going to be left with this expression here. And maybe you got stuck because now you're seeing that the numerator has a power that's greater than the denominator. The way you want to deal with this now is you want to break this fraction up into parts where each individual part's easier to integrate. And we're going to use a method known as polynomial division, otherwise known as long division. So if you've already seen it, feel free to skip forward. And if you haven't, we're going to do it right now. And before I go on, if you're finding value in this video and you want to crush your next exam like a ninja, be sure to ninja kick that subscribe button and pick up some swag below to rock on your next exam as well. So what I want to do now with long division is I take the denominator known as the divisor. I put it here on the left. The numerator, this u cubed, is going to go underneath the bracket here known as the dividend. And for every missing term in the polynomial expression, I'm going to use these zero coefficients. It just helps write every term out. Now, the reason why I put u squared here for the first term of the final quotient is because the way I got it is the following. For the divisor on the left, the u plus 1, take the term that has the highest power of u, which is this u expression. And then for the right, take the highest power of the dividend, which is u cubed. We want to figure out what do you multiply u by to get u cubed? Well, it's u squared, right? So now you take u squared from the quotient, multiply it by every term on the left in the divisor, and you're going to write that expression below and then subtract everything. So when you multiply through, you got u cubed plus u squared. And by subtracting everything, you're going to get minus u squared. And then now I'm going to pull down the next lowest polynomial power term, which is u to the first or u down to this expression. And it has a zero in front, but that's okay. Just stick with me for a bit. Because ultimately what we're gonna do here is we're gonna keep repeating this, bringing down the next lower power term until we get to the very end. So now what I wanna do is for negative u squared plus zero u, once again, how many times does u plus one go into this? For u plus one, take the highest power term, which is u. And then for this expression here, the highest power term is negative u squared. So u times a negative u will give you negative u squared. So I'm going to write that as the next term in my quotient above. And once again, now negative u is going to be multiplied by every term on the left. I'm going to put in parentheses because I'm dealing with the negative here. That's going to give you negative u squared minus u. And we're going to once again subtract everything, giving you a u as a result plus now bringing down the next lowest power term, which is just a constant term, which is zero from the dividend above here. Once again, now we're going to repeat this and we're going to say, how many times does u plus one go into u? You compare the u terms and that's pretty simple, right? It's just a constant of one. So I'm going to add this one here to the dividend and I'm going to repeat once again. So one times every term in the divisor will be giving you u plus one below. And when I subtract everything, I'll get minus one and I'm done. I'm left with this final coefficient here. And that coefficient is essentially going to be divided by the original divisor. So what this means then is u cubed over u plus one, you take every term from the 
quotient above, as is the u squared minus u plus 1. And then for this final remainder here, this minus 1, it's going to be divided by the divisor. So what we can do now is we can take this integral we were working on above and rewrite it by using the result of long division here. And then for everything in parentheses, I'm going to individually integrate it and add and subtract the terms, leaving the 6 out in front until the very end and not adding the plus c until the very end. So this is pretty simple. The integral of u squared is 1 third u cubed minus 1 half u squared after integrating the u term plus u. Now for 1 over u plus 1, you could do another u substitution. I would recommend using a different letter name because we already are using a u here. But by inspection, you can save time because if you look at taking the derivative of u plus 1 on the bottom, you just get a coefficient of 1. So you can just quickly just say it's natural log of the absolute value of u plus 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute the sixth term. But before I do that, remember that because x equals u to the sixth, and now we need an answer in terms of x, you can take the sixth root of both sides to find out that u is going to be the same as x to the one sixth. So everywhere we see a u now, we're going to plug in x to the one sixth and then multiply the one sixth by whatever power we're raising to to get the final power of x. So you can try this on your own. But by doing the work, you're going to find out that for the inner part of the parentheses here, you'll get one third x to the one half. I'm using the square root notation instead of x to the one half here. Minus one half x to the third, which is the same as the cubic root, plus x to the one six, which is the same as the six root of x, and so on. Now I'm going to multiply the six all the way through, giving me this final answer here. And then for the next problem we're going to work on,